everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, I know we're on the third day and it's been overwhelming. Um, my name is Leah Clapman. I'm the managing, managing editor of education at the PBS NewsHour. Um, and with me is Lucy Flores, a student from Salt Lake City who participated in the student reporting labs. And we're going to see work that she did. Um, another student from, uh, from Salt Lake City from West High School. Um, and talk about our project, which is really Journalism as a form of learning. Um, I am actually kind of an outlier here at this conference. I'm a journalist instead of an educator or a professor or um, a programmer. Um, but I really believe that journalism can be one of those new um, kind of forms of, of teaching and learning and experimenting and creating that's a really powerful um, learning tool, which the students can talk about. Um, also, Chris Carpenter. Chris, why don't you come up here? Chris Carpenter, also from West High School, actually just graduated, who um, made some of the media that, that I'll be showing. Um, so the Student Reporting Lab started around a year and a half ago. Uh, it combines mentoring with an open collaborative platform where the students exchange ideas. They also exchange um, scripts and rough cuts, and they get feedback from mentors and the other students around the country who are participating in the program. Right now we have over 15 schools and two after-school programs um, who, are, who are doing this. Um, and they also combine video that they go out and shoot with Creative Commons rights cleared video that the News Hour provides. We've gone through our archives and every time we talk about a topic that the students are going to cover, we comb through the archives and we look for video that they can use um, in their reporting or to cover you know, some of their narration as B-roll. Um, and then we've also developed a really a strong journalism curriculum out of the project. So it's an open curriculum. It keeps growing as more students participate, as more teachers uh, kind of use this in their classroom. They give us suggestions. They give us handouts. They give us um, key components of the curriculum. So it's constantly growing. And I think also a key part of this project is that it's an authentic learning experience. It has an authentic purpose. These students are creating reporting that's going to go on a national site. Um, we've had one of the pieces from New York City at the end of the PBS NewsHour broadcast. So the national broadcast, over 2 million people per, per night, um, it saw a piece of student work because it, had, it, was, it was a great piece of work. Um, and it gave the students and it gives everyone who participate, participates in the project a real sense of this is why we're doing this. And this is why it has to be really high quality because it has a chance of going on the, on the national broadcast. Um, and then it's also an authentic audience of their peers. So the students are producing this work um, for the other students around the country who are, who are working on these projects, and then also for the national audience of the news hour. So I'm going to um, first play one of the videos. Um, we'll see how long, we, I know we have, we're really short on time, and I want the students to be able to talk about the experience and how it was you know, different from the other classes that they take, um, and kind of you know, have a conversation with you guys. But let's look first at um, Chris's piece about the refugee program in, um, in Salt Lake City. It has buffered, so. The refugee process is one of the hardest and most complex processes a human being can go through. The ones who go through it are truly miraculous people. Here is one such story. Well, my family, when I was young, they decided to go to different countries. They they wanted to go to Kenya, yeah, and then we came to Kenya, and then me and my brother left. Then we went to Egypt. which hopefully also is supposed to buffer, um, and then talk a little bit about why PBS is doing this, and let the students talk about what they gained out of the experience. 
Immigration is something widely known throughout our nation, especially here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Immigrants are widely scrutinized, and Why? federal laws make it hard for them to live a life oh, here in America. America. If if they come into America and do our dirty work, and do our work, uh, they want to at least be perceived as being the humans that they are. Of course, the tensions around immigration are not new. On the one hand, we've always defined ourselves as a nation of immigrants. Well, we can can a nation of welcomes those willing to embrace we will American like precepts. Have it's watching both at the same time, it's really. <laughs> all we have before the immigrants left Utah, we simply said we'd all be gone. It would exist, especially in this country, since as immigrants, this is a country of, of immigrants. In Utah, the level of discrimination put on immigrants may be small, but it is there. Socially, it depends on which group of Latinos you're with. And each one of them occupies a different place in the society. So there are people that are mixed very well with everybody that's here, uh, are well accepted into, uh, uh, and into the society as a whole. And typically undocumented immigrants in Utah are objectified, in other words, not seen as people. They're objectified two ways, primarily. Um, one is criminals. And the other objectification that actually goes on here uh, from, from corners of Utah society that welcome undocumented immigrants is that they only see them as workers. You know, we as Americans have gotten used to the idea that if I live in this house, that space in front of my house is my parking space. That's BS. It belongs to the city and anybody can park there. So these are all problems of uh, customs, problems with social integration that some of our people still haven't picked up. And uh, as a result of that, there are some very unforgiving people who live in neighborhoods, not only Anglos, by the way. Our nation's federal immigration laws have displayed our government's hostility towards immigrants who cross the border illegally. Immigration laws are affecting us in a very negative way right now because we're perceived as being hostile, uh, resentful of immigrants in this community, and that's not the, the Utah way. Throughout the years, immigrants have fought to make their place in America. We protested. We've tried to um, uh, bring the facts to the forefront. We've uh, written uh, letters to the editor. We've, we've gathered in the, the Latino communities. We've given them pamphlets. Uh, to let them know what their rights are. You know, they too, whether they're documented or undocumented, they do have rights in our country. So. Uh, immigration laws have always been the third, the third rail of, of politics. No one wants to touch it. Until we have some people to do that, nothing's going to happen. The law put into effect in Arizona has made it so even people who may not be undocumented immigrants are scared to go out into the public without being scrutinized. The bill I'm about to sign into law, Senate Bill 1070, represents another tool for our state to use as we work to solve a crisis that we did not create and the federal government has refused to fix. I, th I think they're hostile, I, th I think they're wrong, and I think they're hurtful. I think they're, 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 they're hateful in the sense that you want, want to punish people. It's not a matter of punishing, it's a matter of finding how do we, how do we reform our laws to make it possible for people to come here and live in dignity and contribute to, to the American dream. In contrast to the harsh bill in Arizona, the Utah Pilot Accountability Permit Program gives immigrants in Utah the chance to come forward and register for an accountability card that would give them the ability to work and live here in Utah. Les Robles has partnered with Paul Merrow from the Sutherland Institute to create this comprehensive plan to aid the lives of immigrants in Utah. Uh, it's based on the idea of accountability. and. Uh, and as long as an undocumented immigrant, just like any other human being, is a person of goodwill, well then we ought to uh, provide opportunities for those individuals. Not only will this bill help those in Utah, but could potentially help immigrants all over the nation live a life they've come to live here in America. One of the things we have to realize is that we live in a period of globalization. We shouldn't be turning inwards. We, are, we welcome the immigrants who really we know the American workforce, the American dream all the time. I'm Lucy Flores, reporting for TV West. So, yay Lucy, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> reporting. Um, so I'm going to let Lucy and Chris talk about the process in a moment, but um, 
You know, why is PBS doing this, um, the PBS NewsHour? Well, we, we always knew that teachers were using NewsHour content way back to when they you know, set their VCR, taped the perfect debate, scaffolded their class so that the class could watch you know, two people discussing it or tape piece, um, and then use that as a way to make connections between what they were teaching and current events, what's going on in the world. Um, so we knew that those teachers were working with NewsHour content, and we wanted to make it much more accessible. Um, so we had lots of focus groups, and we did a lot of experimenting, and we, come up, we came up with a couple of tools for teachers to use current events. And these are all free. You don't have to register. It's just, it's very open. Um, twice a week, we publish a story um, written for a kind of ninth grade reading level um, that comes with teacher tools that we developed with teachers. So it has uh, warm-up questions, reading comprehension questions, discussion questions. Um, we also publish a daily video clip, and these are um, pieces from the news hour that we that are short, that are engaging, a lot of tape. We talked to a lot of teachers who said we want to take our students out of their classroom um, and into another world. So we um, also create a teaching tool with those videos. So again, warm up questions and discussion questions. It can be between you know a five minute activity, and, or it could be half an hour, or it could be a whole class. Um, we make these tools very flexible because that's what teachers told us that they wanted. Uh, they also assign it off, often for homework and other parts, you know, kind of to round out their classes. Um, and we also publish in-depth lesson plans. So these are all free. They're all written by, by teachers practicing in the classroom. Um, and we have a panel of teacher advisors who tell us what topics they think that we should do a lesson plan. So we did a lot on the geography of um, North Africa and the Middle East uh, about social media and protesting. Um, we did a lot during, you know, kind of the Arab Spring and what's going on right now. Um, but through our conversations with teachers, they told us again and again, you know, traditional news sources don't engage our kids. They, it's still like we can just show it to them, and it just kind of it doesn't it doesn't click, it doesn't latch on. So we've developed student voices where we go around and we try to find how the news is affecting young people and have them tell their story. You know, how did um, the tornadoes in Alabama affect young people and you know their 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 lives? Um, we had actually during um, the Egyptian uprising, we had a 17-year-old um, girl who lived in Alexandria talk about going out and protesting, and she you know she was kind of blogging for us, and she you know after Mubarak stepped down, she you know, she came back right away and she started writing her story for um, for the News Hour site for the Student Voices area. Um, and then when we decided it was time to hit the video, you know, the video world, enter um, 21st century, the quality of the video that the students were able to submit just wasn't as good as what they were able to do writing or, or slideshow. So we, we developed student reporting labs where the local PBS station sends a practicing public media reporter into the classroom. And they work with the um, students from kind of start to finish. What's the story? Well, we, we, give them to we gave them topics. I mean, this was not about kind of augmenting um, high school television production. We wanted them to cover the Supreme Court. We wanted them to cover the immigration you know, issues. We wanted them to cover the economy, climate change. We gave them big topics, and we gave them resources. And then the mentors work with them to find the right story angle in their community. And then they go back and forth. They tell their mentor, um, you know, this is the story we want to do. These are the people we're thinking of interviewing. A lot of times the mentors um, have given them kind of access. Here's call this person, ask to do, you know, to get in touch with this person. Um, and then the mentors go over the scripts. And then they go over the rough cuts of the videos. Um, and then they, uh, you know, they, they help the process all the way along. Um, and we, we've done this for a year and a half. We're in 15 different cities right now. But it is, it's open. So there's an application process. Um, on the site, and we've had um, over a thousand applications um, from all over the world as well. We have um, a school in Bahrain that is looking to, to work with this reporting labs model. We have a school in Turkey. We've partnered with a couple of international organizations. Um, we're working on the translation issue, so to translate our curriculum um, into different languages so that you know, it's, it's very, it's easy. Anyone can do it and submit it. If they want the um, mentor relationship, that's like the next tier. That's where they kind of, um, they kind of apply officially, and then we can take who we can take and, and set up that mentoring. 
relationship. Um, so that's really an overview of the Reporting Labs project, and I wanted the students to be able to talk about how the experience is different from other experiences that they have in the school, but yes, before that, questions. So who owns the content for this, and are you um, selling this content on McNair, McNair Lair Productions? Yeah. Okay, so, so and would you give so who owns the content? Yeah. Um, well, once the students produce a piece for us, um, like we own it, they own it. I mean, it's um, they can do whatever they want with it. Um, we can distribute it. We can't sell it. Um, we're looking for you know different platforms. We have a lot of community partners. So um, right now, what we're doing is having the students go out and report about dropout issues. So what is you know the dropout rate in our school? What are different schools? What is why do students drop out? They're interviewing their friends, they're interviewing parents who have dropped out. Um, and then we're using these pieces of media in community forums about the issue. Uh, so in that way, the public television station is using it. Um, the United Way, we're, we're working with the United Way to get these pieces on you know, the community issues around the dropout issue um, as a way of fostering conversation, as a way of telling the story of looking at the issues from a student's perspective. Because while the mentors are advising the students, it's all, and, and these guys can talk about it, it's their ideas, it's their planning, it's their going out and reporting, um, and it's their editing, and it's their production. Um, and, and just a note about the curriculum, so um, while we were piloting this, and these guys can talk about this a little, we discovered gaps. You know, it's one thing to go out and say, go out and report about the Supreme Court, or go out and report about immigration, kind of here's how you do it, but there are very specific skill gaps, or or knowledge gaps about journalism that we tried to fill in the curriculum and that only came out of the, the process of doing it. So even things like um, students had trouble leaving a message, if they were calling an expert in their community uh, to do an interview, they had trouble leaving a message, you know, because they're used to texting. So, you know, the whole, <laughs> we had to like work on a script that was like, you know, hello, my name is, I'm calling from this school, I'm working on this project, I would like to interview about you about this, here's I will call you back, or here's how you reach me. Like We had to write out those scripts. Um, there was a lot about ethics that we discovered. A lot of students were, they would do a piece about recycling, and they'd you know, stuff the recycling bin, or they'd, they'd have kids kind of acting out scenarios, and you know, that's just a journalism no-no. So we had to, so those are the kinds of things that we built into the curriculum. And as I said, it's a living curriculum. We keep on getting amazing pieces that the, stu that the teachers figured out like there's a there's a pitch document, how to pitch a story that came out of the school in Philadelphia. And it's great and it really helps students feel like think about why their story is relevant to a national, international audience. And that, you know, it's not it's not us, it's not our curriculum developers, it's the actual teachers who are doing this. So um, Lucy, why don't you come up <laughs> and, and talk a little bit about the project that you did and how it's different from what you've done in the past. Okay, so my story was the immigration one um, in Utah, and I have always been somebody who has been hands-on and creative with things, and that's how I got into the TV broadcasting program at my school. And, you know, first year we did stories about football games, different things like that, but when PBS came to us and kind of pitched this, you make a documentary, here are four topics, you choose from them, we're going to give you the B-roll, you need to go out there and find the story and find how it relates to your community. It was something that I took a lot of initiative to, you know, learn more about the immigration, uh, more about the immigration subject and the immigration topic in my society and in the in our nation as well. I am of Hispanic descent, so my grandfather is somebody who is integrated and works with the immigration community and works to stand up for illegal immigrant rights and immigrant rights in our nation and has been doing it for a while so there was a pretty good resource for that so when I chose the topic of immigration I went in depth to talk about talk with him and as I learned more about the bills and laws that are actually that were trying to be passed in Arizona it made me think well, me, my grandfather, my aunt, my dad, my cousins could get pulled over on the side of the street and asked for their citizenship records, which hit me hard to know that this topic really could affect me and my family and my grandfather in negative ways. So it helped me 
get the drive to go out and find interviews and figure out how it related to my society and how to relate it to kids in my school as well who are, are in the same situation as me and who are in worse situations where they are here illegally. Um, I kind of am a pretty outgoing person so I think uh, making connections and being able to call people and working with adults and getting them to do interviews with me was pretty easy for me but I think the hardest thing for me was, you know, setting up the interviews and worrying about what kind of B-roll I need, how am I going to fill this story, and I think um, PBS really helped me with that and with getting me the B-roll and kind of giving me an outline of what I should do, and I'm not the kind of kid who's going to sit in a math class, who likes to sit in a math class or an English class and do assignments all day and then just get a test at the end of the quarter. I learned so much more from working with PBS and making this documentary than I ever have in class. And just looking at a board or looking at a PowerPoint or listening to somebody lecture out of a book. It's something that helped me connect and be hands-on with something that is in society and something I could learn a lot about. And it's pushed me to make other stories about different things happening in the world. I've recently done a story on the Occupy Wall Street when I went to New York. I'm thinking about doing a story that um, looks into kind of how um, how the, sorry, I can't think of what I'm trying to say, how the economy affects everybody around us, especially because it has affected my family as well, but I think this PBS is a really good way for me and kids who, you know, don't like to sit in class and read out of a book, really learn something and kind of branch out in their society. So, yeah. Do you, did you actually do the production side of it as well, the, the technical recording? Yeah, yeah. I did have a, um, a partner who helped me with editing, but for the most part, you know, I'd go out with the interviews, just have somebody there to work with the camera as well, but yeah, I did both sides of it, the mm -hmm. interviews. And, and that's in the curriculum as well, um, definitely, soup yeah. to nuts. So, yeah. Well, uh, let's let Chris talk about his experience and then we can, you guys can ask questions of, you know, those students. Okay. So firstly, I just want to say that there's more to my video than just those three yeah. seconds, so I, <laughs> I do recommend checking that out afterwards. But I think that the beauty of um, these news labs is the fact that as student filmmakers, we are able to take a story that otherwise wouldn't be told and related to a high school community and really tell it. And uh, I met Muhammad Hassan uh, to the debate program that um, Utah is known for, and he struck me as an individual whose story was worth telling. Um, and just by sheer coincidence, these PBS NewsHour um, representatives came to West High School and gave me the perfect opportunity, my, gave me and my friends the perfect opportunity to tell this story. And this was, um, I think, the heart of what PBS NewsHour is. It's that empowerment to really go out and become an active, productive member of the media community. And like Lucy was saying, she definitely hit the heart of this, is that as students, we still do need a little bit of structure and a little bit of guidance because it's a big, bad world of media out there. And if we don't have a script to kind of go off of to sound as professional as we can, then we aren't going to be seen as professional, we aren't going to create a product that um, is as quality as we want it to be. Um, and through those, those resources that News Hour gave us, we were able to create things that I think both of us are very proud of. I, I know that Lucy's very proud of her piece. Um, I'm proud of uh, what you saw and what you didn't see. I'm proud of both. Um, and I really look forward to, to doing more. And, um, I've also taken film classes at other places. I, I've um, done fiction film, done at Spy Hop Productions in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, and they, although they um, also kind of gave us the, the same sorts of technological resources, it was not as relevant or as important as what PBS did. Because um, Muhammad Hassan is, as you would see, uh, a refugee who was just trying to find his way in Salt Lake City community, and he, although we got involved in debate, he just didn't feel like he had a place to call home. And as we talked to him, as we followed him, we started off at a soccer match that, uh, just a community soccer team that he's, he's, he's a part of, um, 
as we follow him, we, we realize that basically what we all want is just a place to call home. And the fact that he didn't have that was just a driving force in his life. And that's something that is universal. West High School has its fair share of refugees. East High School, Highland High School, I'm sure Park City High School has at least a few, right? Um, and that is sometimes a story that doesn't go, to, or isn't told. Um, and like I was saying, it, it was just a perfect opportunity to tell a story that otherwise wouldn't be told, and that deserves to be told. And I thank PBS NewsHour for that. Leah, can I jump in real quick? Yes. Um, so I'm Laura Hunter, and I manage uh, the public television station that helps set up PBS News. Hour. I'm like the dating service that set this whole thing up, so I'm just <laughs> beating with pride back here. Um, but I wanted to tell you, without the open access to the B-roll that PBS News Hour provided, this would not have happened. So um, we're located in Salt Lake, and we've been working with high schools and community college journalism students to try and get them to produce things. But they don't have access to the role of immigration marches or um, you know the Supreme Court swearing in ceremony or the kinds of things that PBS News Hour just had sitting around on the editing floor, your figuratively. Um, and for them to be able to open that up and say, here's you know the B role, but what you have is the story that's unique to you. It's just been a great model, I think, for um, the value of having open access to that content and what it could do when it's in the right people's hands. And I want to say, um, both Chris, Chris and Lucy represent a whole class of students that just produce some amazing work. Uh, we ended up hiring Chris after we graduated from high school last summer, and he's now doing editing work um, and production work. Right. Yes. And, and um, I mean, that's something that has happened throughout our sites. We, one of the, um, if you've seen Ken Burns's Prohibition documentary that's been recently, a student in Texas edited a piece about Prohibition in the border region of Texas that was aired on the Texas PBS stations um, right after that, so five minutes about prohibition in the Texas border region, um, edited by a student reporting lab student. So it really is career skills, it's you know those 21st century soft skills about teamwork and collaboration. You guys both talked about working in teams. Um, and the critical thinking, I mean, I think that one of the pieces, one of the first pieces that I wanted to show, but we just don't have time, was Chris's piece about the Supreme Court. And these students in Utah did an amazing, you know, reflection on how Supreme Court cases were, how they compared to Utah law and how Utah law was influenced by the Supreme Court and vice versa. Um, and some really, like, you know, unique perspectives that we in the media feel are really important. Um, yes? I actually had a question for Lucy. Lucy said that um, she, but didn't really like the blackboard and textbook approach. I was kind of curious after doing this now, did it help to go back to that now? Do you see how it, does it help integrate the blackboard and the textbooks more into what you're doing now? Definitely. Um, I feel like they're all hear something in class or hear about something in class and think, well, here's what I, I could do, you know, a story on this or talk more in depth about this. And you know, I'll watch the news and everything. And it's really helped me especially find my passion, which is journalism, and it's helped me kind of narrow that down, especially as a senior in high school, it's good to kind of know what you want to do, and that's, yeah, it's pretty good, so. And I should say that, oh, we're out of time. I should say we're also looking at this model um, in the sciences, so um, having students go out and apply what they're learning in biology, earth sciences, to issues in their community, going out and using those investigative reporting kind of skills um, and making those connections about what they're learning in the classroom to what's going on in their community to an authentic piece of media for you know an audience that will um, you know I think appreciate what this unique perspective of the young people shows them. Um, I know there, there are some other questions but I think we're out of time um, so you know you can come see me I have some flyers you can talk to the students um, and we'd love to hear your ideas about how this can be expanded or integrated into all of the great open um, educational resources that you guys are building.